Good morning, peeps. Hello there. Ooh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And it is a good morning. I'm feeling very... <laughs> I'm feeling very soft today. Um, this morning. <clears throat> Woke up this morning with a lot of gratitude again. It is a, a constant thing with me. So, how are you today? How are you doing? I hope you have been enjoying my videos. My authentic videos. My expressive self. My playful self. And my serious self. And all the sides that make up a person. Which you know that basically I don't... <clears throat> believe there is a person here because as I investigate my experience <laughs> constantly because that's the most interesting thing for me because why am I here you know like why are we here why are we here on this planet and it, it's just I don't know I think we're all curious perhaps or if we just stand still for a moment and look at just look at your existence. I don't know, ever since I was a little boy, I've been constantly curious about development, about ego, about the divine, um, about spirituality, about, well, I didn't know it was consciousness until very uh, much later in my life and realized what consciousness was or even believed in any kind of <clears throat> so-called woo-woo um, experiences. Like I said, I had an experience when I was five years old that taught me about myself um, or showed me something that was outside of me that I experienced. Um, I'll tell you that right now. And I think it's one of the, my earliest memories and it's vivid and I can remember it um, quite well. I was sitting in the back seat of the car with my this is synchronicity um, or a premonition of sort. So I was five years old. I was sitting back uh, seat of my car with my mom. And to make a long story short, she was parked at a gas station in a rural area in Alabama. And I don't know, I was around five, I think, something. And um, I knew that I would be living <clears throat> in the trailer, a mobile home that was parked next to this gas station. And I knew that it would, that I, that we would live there. I just knew it. So my mom married that man and we moved into that house. So <clears throat> I guess that's the, that, that early, early on in my life, I've had many experiences, like I've said. So I became very curious about synchronicity later on in my life. I think it was here in Amsterdam. I've been in Amsterdam about 13, 14 years. And because I, I was very curious about myself and, and as I grew and, you know, I've, um, a lot of circumstance in my life has been vital to my growth. And so my circumstances um, of living in different countries, of dancing, per particularly dancing, is like a form of meditation for me. It has been. So it's kind of, um, I realize that I'm in a certain zone when I dance or that I dance. And that's been, I don't know obviously a part of my life since I was 15 years old and I could find myself um, in some kind of zone when I do it and that I am in a meditative state, state where I don't really think about anything else um, other than the sensation of my body and maybe the steps and that becomes automatic and I don't think so I'm not thinking so <clears throat> I think that that along with my life um, and my a constant discovery about this individual or this this thing became very um, interesting for me to just even observe myself um, and and recognize that the spirit world is part of my choices and recognizing this but first you know um, I think that my life 
my life is a very interesting one as well as I believe everybody's lives are interesting for them and I think we I get I you know I'm at a point in my life right now because of all my experiences and all that contrast and all this experience has taught me to live authentically for myself and as optimistic as that as that sounds it's exactly what I I think intend if I um, intend and I intend by letting go of of letting go of any kind of baggage that I have had or burdens that I've carried and forgiveness became part of that all of these experiences a lot of experiences in my life that has brought me to um, actually live my life from the point of the spiritual um, and from the observer because of the you know in our lives we all all of us um, it seems to be inescapable but because of the the conditioning in our lives that we have experienced and I do say that often because I don't know another word other than um, I don't like brainwashing or the conditioning that happens with us as children as we come into this world it is a constant um, a constant how can you say um, feeding of information information that comes into us and that you know when when you start learning about yourself and you ask yourself certain things about uh, thoughts or thought patterns that you've had and where does these things come from and you realize that that a lot of your thoughts are not even are not even yours because they have been conditional conditioned in you and so you've been affected by your family by your religion and by your <clears throat> your daily uh, your daily experiences when you are been with these guidance systems that I that I've mentioned um, they've been become something that was given to you and that that is something that I realized much later in my life starting maybe in the 20s in my 20s I'm 51 now 20s I think I've just been very curious because I've been on my own also without my family unit around me and so I had to I was able to observe myself observe myself outside of my family unit and all of that <clears throat> all of those belief based systems that in, that um, created this I don't know person uh, and when I started to realize that a lot of my thoughts and uh, these um, uh, dominant thoughts were not my own I started to observe them and I started to realize and I think that dance somehow um, and I'm so grateful that I got into dancing because it was a world that I could start to open up and be myself and not be worried about <clears throat> Um, my 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 preference, sexual preference, or being uh, homosexual and being gay, which was I thought I think that's part of you know and being bullied in school because I was a sensitive guy. Oops. I think that what is very interesting is that you know when you observe this, th all this condition created this this human being here, and this suffering um, happens, and it's like I think something that is very um, interesting for one who is curious about their own development and that is like just recognizing that how you have been conditioned is a possibility for for us to step back and look at ourselves and so this is ongoing and there's this I feel like two different beings there is the human drama and you know all of that that causes that suffering <clears throat> because of the conditioning and telling you that what is right or wrong when you start to accept non-dualism and that there is no right or wrong or like at least setting, starting when you're developing starting yourself from that position and realizing that the right or wrong like that if you open your mind that there is no right or wrong and you start from a clean place for yourself to let go of all the conditioning and start a fresh moment that there you recognize that the, the power is in this moment to make a decision of what is right or wrong for you and not for the other or not for the masses or all this kind of thing and that's a brave brave heart 
and that I experience and I experience in that conditioning and it rises in my mind about you know um, the judgments and the labels and all those things are there but all of that's coming from a history of experiences that I had younger in my life that is it there in the brain and it's constant it can be constant and and when you observe it you realize that hey this is not my thought that's my thought all this stuff my battery is blinking on my on my camera right now so it's going to cut off <laughs> I don't know um, it always it's on its own timer but I can tell you what I experience now is the observer like I've let go of the ego and I've let go of all of all of that drama inside of me it doesn't mean that it doesn't arise but I can have a, have an opportunity to redefine myself and reinvent myself <laughs> I just thought about Madonna. No, but seriously, I mean to reinvent myself and to put myself into situations so I can become more and more spiritually based in myself. And there is no, there is no suffering or comparison. It doesn't arise. I mean, it doesn't arise in our minds because it's conditioned and the mind is really, really strong. But it's not who you are, I don't believe. And there's a possibility to step outside of that and observe it. And so... I live my, I have a lot of synchronicity in my life and synchronicity like and premonitions or I choose my life journey because of these situations. I'm not concerned about what people think of me and that's a long thing. And sometimes it rises and sometimes it's, I give it power and I give it power. Um, I think it's my prerogative and it is your prerogative I believe. People are not going to like that because it's difficult and painful to step outside of your comfort zone. It simply is. It's just difficult for a lot of people. And people will judge you for expressing yourself. And, you know, life is like a roller coaster. And it depends on how you think about it, I think. Things change when you change your mind. And you have that possibility. And it's your birthright. And it's beautiful. Thank you for watching this morning. I'm going to cut it off before it cuts off by itself. You are incredible. You are powerful. You are more than just your ego. You are divine. And you are gorgeous and you are beautiful. And I love you and I love you so much. Let's help the world and realize ourselves. Let's have less arguments today. Have less, just more, more hugs. You know, sometimes it's really difficult for people to hug. I have to go, but I want to continue talking to you. I love you so much, and thank you for watching. Have a beautiful weekend, and I'll see you Monday. Thank you so much. Keep loving, loving hearts. <laughs> Bye.